Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Jockelson, and I'm from Coco Moon Design, and this is... Right, you're barely audible. Okay, hello. How's that? That's better. Just wave in the back if you can. Should we all move forward? Would that help? You could, yeah. yeah. Or I can just speak like this. I don't mind, just let me know if you can't hear. Yeah. And we'll keep the door shut once everyone's in. Yeah, let's just have people in. It's, it's noisy over there. Hmm? It's noisy over there. It's noisy over there. Maybe we'll just wait a few minutes for everyone else to start their sessions and then they won't be out there being noisy. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They will be noisy. So I'm Katie, I'm from Coco Moon Design and this is Valerie from Civi Desk. And our presentation today is about how to customise both your Civi CRM and your Civi CRM public facing pages that make up part of your website. Um, everything that Valerie's going to be talking about is kind of easy stuff that anyone can do. There's all through the interface, so no coding needed, click, click. And what I'm doing is a bit of interface stuff and also a bit of just kind of inspiration about what is possible um, with the theming side of things that could be something that you're doing in your own organization or could be something that you need a developer to do. Um, but it's just to kind of show you what's possible for the public facing Civi CRM pages, so that in case you're thinking, oh, Civi CRM looks horrid, how's that going to work with my website? It's going to be about that. So, Valerie's going to start. Okay, thank you, Katie. <coughs> so, you've noticed sometimes Civi CRM is not as sexy as you wish it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but it's improving. 4.6 is better, but it's improving, but it takes time, you know. So the idea is to have like easy changes through the administrator um, menu, uh, few tricks, those are basic stuff. It takes a few minutes and it can change your life. So I'm going to talk about word replacement, uh, changing CV menu, changing contact display, custom field display, or customizing advanced search. So those are basics, but sometimes users don't know they can, with a few clicks, change and customize <coughs> CV. So uh, word replacements. Just you want to change some uh, words so they better fit the uh, vocabulary of your organization. For example, in the, in the main menu, of course, or somewhere else. So you go to administer, you go to customize data and screens, and you go to word replacements. Easy. And let's say you want to replace campaign by grant, and campaigns by grants because it better fits the vocabulary of your organization. Just easy. You can have a check on is it an exact match or not. You can do that or not. And then it replaces in every word, everywhere where you have this campaign word, it turns into grants. Everywhere in CV, in all the different screens. And now it's grant. So that's easy. OK. Um, another way to customize CV is to change the CV CRM menu. You're not using all the different menu, and you want to have a new, uh, a new page, for example, more accurate uh, regarding your organization needs. For example, you want to add members this month. This is like a report. You want to have it on the main menu. Just easy. You go to administer, you go to customize data and screens, and you go to navigation menu. Then you add the title, you add the URL of the page. For example, here it's a report, but it can be any page in CV. And then you decide where you're going to include this new menu, either uh, under contributions or memberships, for example, or on the main, on the main uh, menu. So you decide where you want this new page. 
So you, with the uh, arborescence, I don't know how you say that. Well, with this, you decide exactly which place you want to have this uh, new menu. Okay, you can drag and drop. Yes, exactly. <laughs> No, arborescence means the tree. Oh. You have a tree. <laughs> the menu structure. Yeah, the menu structure. Yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, and now we included your report members this month on the main menu of CV. A few clicks, easy. Two minutes. And for your users, it's much more comfortable because they want to see that at a glance. OK, now another way uh, to customize CV is contact display, because sometimes you just don't like the way it is contacts are displayed. You want something more personalized. So for example, you want to have the middle name um, uh, displayed. For example, you want instead of May Adams, you want to have May Elizabeth Adams. That's one thing. Or you want to have the different tabs in a different order and to uh, cancel the tabs you're not using. Easy. You go to Administer, Customize Data and Screens, and you go to Display Preferences. And then you have all different options. For example, you have the um, Invert Display Name, and here you add the middle name, the token for the middle name. And then regarding the, uh, the different tabs, here you click on click what you need. If you're not using pledges, there's no need to have it on your menu. And the same as if you don't use cases or if you don't use grants, there's no way of having much stuff in your menu. For the display name, can you bring in custom fields? Sorry? Can you bring in custom fields in the display name? Custom fields, um, I don't know. I'm not technical, so yeah, I don't know. I need to think about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe you have an answer. I've seen it happen, but I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that was a good question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe with a custom field ID or I don't know. I don't know. Probably need a small extension for that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not technical. I'm just like clicking. That's all I do. <laughs> you know, I, I drive the car. Well, I try to drive the car, but I don't care what's inside in the engine. I, I don't want to know. Okay, yes. I'm just focusing on driving. <laughs> okay. So um, so here, yes, you have the middle name uh, displayed, and you have the different the different tabs in a different order, and you get you got rid of the tabs you don't need. So your CV is customized and much simpler for your users. They're not lost with all different information they don't need. Okay, now custom fields also is a good way to customize CV. So you've noticed that you have different, two different ways to have your custom fields. Either in line, so that means underneath the contact, the usual the basic info, or tab. So in line is underneath. So we recommend in line custom fields for like uh, basic, uh, for uh, basic info, like you don't have much information and in tab if you have a long list of custom fields in custom field set, of course. So if you have a long list, it's better tabular. Or for example, if it, doesn't, um, if it doesn't concern all your contacts, for example, press contacts, I would have my custom fields for press contacts in the tab because they don't apply to all my constituents. They only apply to uh, press contacts, as well as partners and so on. So you have two choices and it's uh, also a good way to customize CV, to make it your CV. So either inline, so that means underneath the basic info, or uh, on tab. 
And then another way to customize CV is to uh, customize uh, advanced search, because in advanced search you have many things, and some th the things you're not using, they don't need to be there because it's confusing for your users. So the same, you go to administer, customize data and screens, and you go to display preferences. And then in contact search, you click or unclick what you need, what you don't need. Can Easy. You ask the previous one is uh, the inline or the tab. That's regarding the custom fields. And where do we change those? I mean, is that? You, you go to administer and custom, custom fields. fields. And then you decide. Yeah, right? you decide. Same, same you decide on what, uh, on what does it concern contacts, so all different types of contacts, or you decide is it only individuals, or it's only uh, organizations, or it's only participants, or it's only activities, so you decide on what they refer, and then you decide do they, how are they displayed online or tab. Great, thank you. That's custom fields. Yeah. So uh, here you click or you unclick what you need. So once again, if you don't use pages, you don't need to have them in your advanced search. The same as grants. If you don't use grants, you don't need to have them in your advanced search. So you make your interface simpler for your users. Are all these changes global or do they depend on the role? So for instance, an authenticated user might see these. Uh, these are global search. for your CV, your CV instance. Just for the entire installation. Yes, yeah. exactly, for your CV instance, yes. But can you customize them for roles as well? <coughs> I'm sorry? Can you customize them for different roles? No, that's what I was asking, but no. apparently not, yeah, no. 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 no, this is to customize your instance, your CV. But say if you, you, you turn off Yeah, so this is the thing that you don't want for anyone. Yes, that's for the access. Yes, the role is the ACL is the access, something different. Okay, that's it um, for. And then I will uh, let Cathy talk. And just to let you know, we have different trainings on CV. So we have uh, online uh, group sessions for beginners. We have uh, intermediate and advanced uh, training sessions, group sessions, advanced sessions, and uh, we have also sessions in French. And we have also uh, CV tips. Uh, CV tips is quite new. It's uh, short sessions of uh, half an hour, and um, they focus on one thing. For example, we would have like um, a CV tip on custom fields and you go deep into a particular point. So all these trainings are, uh, you just register, this is from our website, you just register, the cost is very low, and they are very helpful. That's it, and we'll take questions after uh, Cathy's uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So um, my name's Katie. I work more on the front-end development side of things. Um, I specialize in Drupal, um, theming, which is the part of the job where you make your website look nice, um, as well as configuration, both in Civi CRM and Drupal. So um, I don't know how much people know about this stuff, but I'll just say some basic things, which is that your content management system, which is what you probably think of as your website, is over here, that's your going to be WordPress, Drupal or Joomla site, and then you've got your Civi CRM, which sits alongside it, and they kind of overlap in places and they can talk to each other. So my part of the session today is about where you're pulling information through from Civi and displaying it on the front end, so the public facing Civi CRM pages. So they are going to be things like event registration pages, uh, donation pages, membership signups, and maybe like newsletter subscription, those kind of forms. Um, so the first thing, which is something that can be done by the interface, is that in a Civi CRM site, and so this is a Drupal site with a theme that me and Oliver Gibson did last year. 
Um, and everything that you're seeing on this page that's making it look like a website is the theme. You can see that if you turn off the theme, it's literally just the HTML of the page. So it's all there in a line, images and links, but no sort of styling. So the theme is the kind of the outfit for the, for the website. And you can try on different themes um, for different, with the same content and make it look totally different. So the theme in Drupal is set here under the Appearance tab. And there's an, an equivalent in WordPress and Joomla. So you can see that this is our custom theme that's set for the, the entirety of the website. But then if you scroll down, you get to the admin theme part. And that's then broken down into the administration theme for the website. So that's when you're going and adding content and doing all the website -y side of things. And that's appropriate for that to be a very simple theme. That's the kind of theme you're seeing in these kind of pages, like a nice plain white theme with lots of space and everything laid out. It doesn't, it doesn't need to look anything at all like the front end. Um, and then you have the choices to set the Civi CRM theme. So there are two options here. Um, one is for the admin pages. And again, what you want is to use whatever the default theme is for your Civi administration. And that's what you're used to seeing. And so if you're sitting in the office and interacting with Civi, you just want to see something really simple like this. You don't want fancy headings and font colors and funky text. But then you've got this, which is the Civi CRM public theme. So this sets the theme that gets used for the bits we just talked about, the public facing, the parts that your users are going to be interacting with. And so at the moment, this is set to seven, which is the same as the rest of your website admin side of things. And so that means that your, let's just, you're on a website like this and you want to sign up for an event. Everything's looking all styled and nice. And you click to register on an event, and you're kind of seeing an admin style page. And that's not what you want. So we've also got, that's kind of what a contribution page looks like out of the box for Civi. And then you've got a membership sign up page. And you know, they look fine, but they're not in keeping with the rest of your site. So just by changing this Civi CRM public theme to the default theme, which is what you're seeing here, you're already doing most of the job of making your Civi pages fit in with the rest of your site. So if I just refresh all of <coughs> these guys, suddenly they've taken on the theme of the rest of the site. They've obviously got the same header and footer areas, link styles, things like that. And um, so it would be a lie to say that it was as simple as ticking that box. Um, that's going to give you, depending on how complicated your theme is and who's written it, because the other thing is that you might have just bought an off-the-shelf theme. and there's no accounting for kind of how complex the styling is in those themes. So the, the kind of the job is to really just turn on the front end theme for the Civi pages and have a look at what that is. And then you're going to be looking at making some extra additions to the theme. And that's going to be using a coding language called CSS. So for most of you, that's going to be a case of working with a front end developer or a designer. Um, because there's kind of a lot of, so basic text will obviously inherit from the front end theme, there's, there are headings, there, there's text, there's links in the front end, so they'll come through. But there's going to be things like these, these inputs, radio buttons, maybe they haven't been accounted for in your theme. Um, I mean, that doesn't look particularly wonderful, but that's a, that's a Civi CRM profile pulling through the option to sign, to sign up to different mailing groups. Um, so someone's going to have to do a little bit of work with just tweaking your theme to work for your Civi CRM pages. But what I just want to show you today is that it is possible for your Civi pages to look as cool and nice and in keeping as the rest of your site, really. Um, this is another website I worked on quite a long time ago. 
and you can see here an example of this is, you can tell it's a civvy page by the URL, but it's a highly stylized page. <coughs> Looks really nice. It's all been broken down. And this is another site of a wildlife park in Kent that, um, again, you've got membership sign up pages. So I hope that gives you event pages. I hope that gives you an idea of what is possible. And it's not a huge amount of work. I mean, I don't want to tell you how long it's going to take or how much it's going to cost. But um, if you've already got someone working on a theme for you, for the, for the rest of your website, for them to incorporate the Civi CRM pages is really only an extra small amount of work. Um, yeah. Can I just ask, I don't know if it's technically related to that, but with the things like um, the payment um, form that was up there, do you have to have a security certificate with the website then? Or can I just know that I've asked people before about having online payments connected to our website, and they said that's a whole different security thing because you've got people's important details there? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the best person to answer that question, but um, with this site, for example, I know they've just got a PayPal um, business account and it's, it's configured to work. And it, when it goes live, it won't be at an HTTPS address. That's all I know. But there are other people here who can... Yeah, and all, it's just a case of, you know, styling some PayPal buttons a little bit and putting them in the right place. Yeah, to configure, uh, for example, PayPal in, a, in an event page, for example, you need to do config in CV and then config in the PayPal account. Okay. So and that's how it comes up like that? You, you do in, in both. You need to do a little bit of configuration in both, but it takes 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you place Twitter as an on-site or off-site processing? Yeah. Um, payment gateway. So some payment gateways put Take the you away. page and then it will leave in the theme. Sometimes other, other times when you click on it, it takes you to their site. Yeah. Not necessarily. At this, no, it, it doesn't. At this, so you can set up PayPal to be your payment provider, and then when you go to configure any kind of contribution page, whether it's a donation or a membership sign-up page, you choose which payment processor, and they'll be available in a drop-down. So you could theoretically have several. Most people just have one, and at that point you choose it, and then it appears here as the option. But yeah, like Joanne said, it may then take you off, or it may be something that someone's set up with the security to happen all in all. Um, oh, and the last thing was just a newsletter subscription form, which you can either do as a Civi CRM profile or something called a web form using a module called Civi Web Form, which allows your, Civ your data to go into Civi through simple forms or very complicated forms. But this is a very simple one input form that signs people up to a mailing group in Civi CRM, and as you can see, is totally part of the site. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, if anyone's got any questions for either of us. Um, we've already had some theming done on our city so that bits of it look quite like our website. Mm -hmm. But we find that we can't make events look anything like as good on city as they do on our website. And I'm wondering whether that's because we haven't paid for enough work to be done on the city side. And one of the things in particular is that we use a particular font. Mm. And I don't know if it's possible to use that on the front facing pages or our city site or not. I wondered if you did. It should be. I mean, there are lots of ways to call fonts into themes. So there's a module which allows your site to talk to like the Google font library and typekit and those kind of things. It really depends how it's been configured. There's another way where you load up the font files themselves <coughs> as files, like you're pulling in a document. Um, in any case, it shouldn't be a problem to add it to Civi Pages. Um, they, they call all the same style sheets and all the same scripts, so it's the same kind of thing as that. Okay. Yeah, so it's theoretically definitely possible.
Anyone else? You, Katie was talking at the beginning about these, the things she was doing um, affected everybody's... Valerie. Valerie, yeah. sorry, no. Valerie. Um, affected what everybody would see. Is there a way of setting up, for example, I don't need to see grants or contributions, but some of my colleagues do. So is the worry for each of us to make it show the bits we want to? And yes, this is configuring the access to CV. That's a different topic. Right. But there is a way, yes, to, to decide who is seeing what. So as in that, that's the setting on your CMS, and it differs, like we use WordPress and the options are quite limited for mm. restricting what different people can see with different yeah, in Drupal, you'll, you set up various roles and then you assign permissions so you can turn off whole CV components for staff editor, turn them on for staff admin. You see like a big grid of yeah. all the possible we, options. We've struggled with the roles, to be fair, because I, mean, I, I haven't been able to work out which boxes I need to tick and untick mm. um, in order to make it useful. Mm. You know, because I unticked something for some people and then found they couldn't do what they needed to do, so yeah. they basically ended up sticking everybody on a higher level than they ought to be. Yeah, that's a very common situation. I would suggest just if, you, if you've got the budget to pay a developer and just speak to them as any civvy implementer, loads of people here would just a few hours advice really on that subject. Mm -hmm. it's, t it's worth getting that really tight. Yeah, because some so of the... It's, it's relatively, it's, am I relatively new? I think it's been there about six months or so, so it depends when you were looking at it last, whether mm -hmm. it would have been there. I look at them and go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because some of the names of the CIVI permissions are a little bit confusing, yeah. so it is worth getting your head around it. Yeah. Or someone else's head. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay. Fine. Good. <laughs>